Let's do one more here. This is a uh, probably a, a palmar mass in a child. That would be the classic story. And it's down deep, usually um, in either in the subcutis or even deeper down to the tendon sheath. And you can see from, from here, I could show you uh, other areas, but really all of it looks kind of the same. We've got islands of fragmented calcifications, and these are surrounded by uh, kind of uniform round uh, cells. And the round cells kind of wrap around these islands of calcium. And in some places, they kind of come out like spokes on a wheel. Let's see, maybe I can find a better area that does that. They sometimes can do this, they make like these columns. See this like straight line coming out? Sometimes they radiate out from the islands of calcium. And if you've seen this before, I'm sure you instantly knew what this was because it is very distinct, at least when the morphology is classic. And then you, the third feature, so there's a triad here, calcification, round cells kind of uh, radiating out from that. And then, oh, my computer's telling me it's time to go to bed. Um, and then here, Coming out away from those islands, you get bland spindle cells that are arranged in long kind of sweeping fascicles, kind of like uh, the features you'd see in a desmoid fibromatosis, only on a much smaller, a much smaller scale. And so um, what, uh, what this is, um, is calcifying aponeurotic fibroma. And these are quite rare as well. They occur usually in childhood, although occasionally uh, you can see them in adults. I have seen them in young adults. And even I think I saw one in like someone who was about in their 40s, if I recall. Um, they are, are most common on the hands, uh, on the palmar side, not the dorsal side for some reason. And they can also occur in the feet, but not usually on the toes. If they can be on the plantar foot or the ankle. I've also, I think, seen them around the wrist. They're usually down deeper. They're often infiltrative at the borders, like you can clearly see here. And because of that, they uh, do have a, a, a propensity for local recurrence. And sometimes years later, I saw one that initially was thought to be a chondroma because it was very had an abundant cartilage component. And sometimes these can have um, some cartilage component in in with the areas of calcium. And um, and that one only on the recurrence you could see little islands like this. And I went back and and got the old specimen from an outside institution from years ago. And sure enough, very subtle in the background, there were little areas of this. But it was a really subtle case and I think it recurred like 10 or 12 years later. No, no problem, no metastasis, they're benign, but they do um, have a, a pretty significant tendency for local recurrence. Um, I think, uh, I, I'm not convinced that you have to excise it with negative margins because it's, you know, it's a non-destructive local recurrence and um, you would not want to do something that would cause a significant morbi morbidity, especially in the hand um, on a child, especially, but I mean, or anyone for that matter. So I, I think you have to think, carefully think about cases like this, that, you know, fully getting negative margins is not always the right solution. And especially in hands and feet, I've had um, careful conversations with hand surgeons and foot surgeons before about how to manage tumors uh, like this where that was not malignant but that could grow back and what what's the right thing to do and I think those are times where tumor boards can be really helpful multidisciplinary tumor boards to talk about the pros and the cons and what the risks and benefits are so I think that's that's practicing good medicine in my book and here's a beautiful one look at the radiating spokes around the wheel so to speak um, in uh, in older patients uh, particularly who have this in uh, in uh, you know, older teenagers or adults, um, when you see a calcifying aponeurotic fibroma, it can have much more abundant calcification and also some cartilage component. And um, so because of that, sometimes it gets mistaken for either a chondroid lesion or, um, you know, calcified lesion. And, and the background features of the, the fascicles of spindle cells and the round cells are not always uh, visualized. 